Today, I'm honored to present Dr. Carlo Bronia findings from our second Long COVID Coalition Congress and uh, his treatment protocol, which in some ways has evolved with time. So this is just another example on how Long COVID Coalition brings change in understanding the disease and helps finding the appropriate compounds to tackle the mechanisms, not symptoms. Next slide, please. So where we are now, there are 2 million people with long COVID in UK alone, and around 180 million people worldwide. There is no approved treatment for long COVID two years from the beginning of pandemic. And I want to raise question to anyone in a position to answer why with such huge in-depth research that we are showing every Congress, we still don't have approved treatments. What we see is happening is there are empirically validated treatments that have been shown to be effective in treatment of people with PTSD, anxiety and cognitive impairment. This was according to a psychologist, James Jackson, who is director of Behavioral Health and Vanderbilt University Medical Center, ICU Recovery Center. In one of the interviews, he said that while new approaches to treating long COVID patients may emerge, many existing psychological and behavioral tools, such as acceptance and commitment therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, group therapy and peer support, for example, seem to be effective treatments for different aspects of long COVID. Then another similar comment was made by a neuropsychologist, Dr. Rene Matahill, patients struggling with insomnia may benefit from CBT while those reporting brain fog may need to work with cognitive rehabilitation therapists and discover compensatory strategies. So instead of understanding why people develop these symptoms, there are such comments made as potential treatments for neurocovid. We think this is wrong. And I would encourage patients to be more vigilant when they are offered such treatments for an after COVID developed depression, insomnia, anxiety, or other neurological symptoms. Next slide, please. So healthcare systems so far failed to provide adequate treatments for one or another reason, but we care and we want to find solutions for the mechanisms which were discussed today. Next slide, please. So going back to our second Congress, Dr. Carlo Bronia presented his lab findings where he clearly shows that SARS-CoV-2 has a dual mechanism. It infects human cells but first it infects, infects bacterial cells in our microbiome. As a consequence, there is release of toxins that go into bloodstream, disturb the CNS and gut-brain axis. And I would encourage all doctors who treat long COVID patients, look into these images. The virus is within bacterial cell and it is there. It is on the images that have been taken for everyone who treats long COVID. So next slide, please. A very important step in Carlos uh, treatment is to stop toxins as a first step. And uh, for adults, main thing is to consider a combination of amoxicillin, clavulanic acid, probiotics, and medicinal slime. This combination will tackle bacteriophage behavior, stop any viral proliferation in the gut lining and bacteria replace, and control bacteria that got killed by SARS-CoV-2 will help restore gut microbiome, restore dampen epithelial cell inflammation, restore mucus layer, restore tight junction integrity, and finally maintain gut homeostasis. So for adults, amoxicillin clavulanic acid for two days, three times a day, then twice a day for four days. For children, amoxicillin and clavulanic acid are prescribed according to body weight for six days. There are alternative options if you're allergic to amoxicillin. Next slide, please. So in long COVID, we have very similar 
combination of these uh, solutions. And the important is oral therapy. So as our speakers also have mentioned this, this step is very important to clear toxins uh, from nose and throat. And we again see the amoxicillin or rifaximin together with probiotics and medicinal snine. So I should highlight that uh, for the probiotics, uh, as per Dr. Leo Gallant, um, Bacillus subtilis has also shown to be very effective and can be used as an alternative to Lactobacillus plantarum or Bacillus clausi. And again, used temporarily for 15 days at least. So in terms of medicinals, for those who is not aware what it is, this is a solution which passed three stages of clinical trials. It is unique phyto uh, pharmaceutical based therapeutic suspension consisting of natural compounds like bacalin, quercetin, curcumin, EGCG, luteolin, hesperidine, and more. And I should say I was very pleased to identify this solution a while ago, and I was very pleased to be able to record an interview of clinical trial data. And feel free to check Long COVID Foundation's YouTube channel if you are interested. So for, ch uh, for children, we also applied the same tactic and we tackle uh, bacteriophage behavior with amoxicillin and clavulanic acid according to body weight for six days. So that's all from me. And once again, I would like to thank everyone who participated today and for such joint effort to address so many pathways of neurocovid, which have been overlooked before. So if anyone from the panel would like to share clinical experience based on amoxicillin and flavonoids combination, please do so. Otherwise, I pass the stage to Philip. Thank you.